Okay, um, I'll do a video here. I finally got around to it. Finally got got outside a little bit, doing a lot of indoors projects and stuff because we're supposed to be in the middle of a freaking lockdown. And uh, April 2020, because of some virus, it's a pandemic now. And uh, finally outside, finally be able to get outside in, in a little bit. And uh, I want to introduce um, something I've been wanting to to archive and show, which is the uh, Roy Croft pack frame, which is an A frame, and uh, this is a backpack, uh, a backpack system that allows you to basically in the bu in the in the bush, as long as you have enough cordage, which is I don't what's what I don't like about it, as long as you're in the bush, you're able to make a backpack. And they can carry a pretty heavy load for a pretty good distance. And this was made popular by Moores Kaczynski. I uh, hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Um, he is a uh, very renowned uh, bushcraft instructor uh, in Canada. Uh, he trained a lot of the Canadian military as well as his mentor, which is what this pack frame is named after, uh, Tom Roycroft. So um, I'm going to show you kind of my version. I'm, I'm, you know, all you need is three sticks, but this one actually takes four. The fourth one is optional. Uh, but this is really how you make this real simple, quick and dirty uh, pack frame that um, works really good. Um, the straps here that I've made, that's a whole nother thing. I'll do, hopefully I'll be able to do a separate video on that, on how to show you how to do that one. Uh, but for the most part, all you need is a bunch of cordage, uh, a blanket, and uh, some sticks, and now uh, you have a good backpack. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to get into it. Alright, so let's um, start out by measuring about 28 inches. Uh, I want to use the stoutest um, sticks that I have, and um, I'm measuring from my fingertips to my armpit uh, my body proportions so I'm measuring about uh, 28 inches and I'm just gonna use my cutting tool here and I'm just gonna knock this off and then we're gonna kind of cut this where it should be cut when we get there so I'm just gonna make a little knock so I know where to cut that at so I've got a little bit of fraying here um, at the end I don't want that so I'm gonna use my Sharpie or a piece of charcoal if this was completely primitive. Um, and I'm gonna measure basically from that point to the same position on my other one. I'm getting the frame there. So here, so I'm gonna cut that off and I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna knock here so I know where to cut. So these are gonna be our two sides just like that okay always sheath your blade all right I got my pruning shears here they should make quick work of things if I was using a rock it would take a while uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and cheat use modern technology for the sake of this demo but I just want to kind of Start to snip into this here. Cut off this frayed end. Okay. That one there is done. And then go ahead and strip some of the bark off here. And then where we cut our notch here, go ahead and snip that. We'll need this smaller piece for uh, later. So I'm going to do the same with uh, this piece here. I just got one notch to cut. And then we'll have our two main pieces. I want to go up here on the top here. And I want to, I want to, I can use a Sharpie or I can use a blade. And I want to just be careful not to cut yourself. Uh, 
where I want to cut. Okay, uh, and so that's here and here. You probably can't see that on camera, and that's okay. That's all right. Because um, once I cut this out, you'll be able to see. So you know, this is just a lesson in cutting grooves here. All right, and um, again with a primitive tool, it's a little, a little bit more daunting. Um, so we're going to cheat with more modern metal enhancements. Little hand saw that I got here. And I can make quick work of this by finding the grooves that I cut. And I can just kind of, I can kind of, just kind of make that groove in there. And the teeth bite into this real quick. Make quick work of it. Just like so. All right. Not too deep. I don't want to cut all the way through. I just want to really score it. Okay. So then once I've scored it, deep enough then what I can do is I can take my uh, blade again and I'm gonna go on the side here okay so there's two cuts made here so I want to go ahead and I want to get on the side here and I can actually kind of pop that out so I'm just kind of go straight down and so I got my cutting board here kind of pop that out on both sides <laughs> and there we have our, our notch cut out and it's cut out at the angle we want basically take this and kind of clean that out a little bit here but this is the uh, the notch that we're able to cut okay so this should sit nicely in here but we're not done okay we're not done I need to do the same thing but on the opposite side to this stick okay with both of our pieces notched out I can put them together like so and they will sit into one another just like that kind of securely now our next task is to lash this together okay so now we're going to lash these together using a transom knot and I've got some cordage here uh, that basically got another video on how to do this so I'm just going to kind of do a review right quick um, so I want to crisscross this on top I want to go around the bottom half here and I'm going to come up through this X right there and I don't kind of cinch this piece together and pull that tight and then I want to take and actually I want to take a length I'm just going to take a small length of this and got some duct tape because of the, the way that this is uh, made this cordage I need to uh, tie it off you have to cinch it off and then cut it in half so it doesn't fray on me entirely and then I can go ahead and <clears throat> kind of lash this around the uh, the sticks to secure this into place and I'm going to just tie this on the back Do a, a double overhand knot, one overhand knot, and then two double, then a double overhand knot. There we go. All right. So <clears throat> that's how we got our first part of the uh, pack uh, lashed together. 
So next I want to <clears throat> take a crossbar here and this is about uh, it's about 24 inches long. I want about 20 inch space between the uh, two ends here about. Again these are approximate measurements they're not exact. So um, <clears throat> and probably about an inch or so up. I want a little bit of uh, inch or so up from the ends from the very ends of the uh, the two supporting frames from our A here. So I want to eyeball these here and kind of make uh, notches as we as we need. Okay, so then once we've made our notches, I'm gonna. Uh, chip these out like I did before. Alright, so we've lashed on the top um, of the triangle and now I've uh, lashed on the uh, left side of the triangle, my left, uh, and then we're gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to lash on the uh, right side of the triangle here. Um, and again, I've cut notches in both pieces. So there's one notch here, and then there's another notch on the other side here so that they sit together quite securely. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna notch these together like that. I'm gonna, or I can tie them together like so, so that they don't slide. Get this on frame, sorry about the lack of frame discipline going on. It's a new angle for me. So right now we have a pretty um, sturdy isosceles triangle. It's not an uh, equilateral triangle. It's more of an isosceles triangle, meaning these two sides are longer than the base. Um, and uh, this is pretty solid, all right? And this is where we would kind of stop, and this is where the traditional Roycroft uh, pack would, would, would be built. Um, but I'm going to do one more step further and I'm going to make a crossbar around about this part here and uh, that's just to even make it more sturdier and it's something I like to do uh, and I've made a couple of these and so I'm going to go ahead and do this with here it's just more practice with making your uh, notches and uh, tying your transom knots uh, but it's also going to add um, extra sturdiness to your frame so this is what I'm talking about. This is just going to add extra uh, support and load bearing uh, to our frame here. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of take my blade here and just mark off where I'm going to make my extra notches. And uh, we can uh, finish this off. Process is just going to be is going to be the same. Okay, um, one more lashing, and I cut the notches in here already, so this will kind of pop in here, and then I'm going to lash this in place, and then we'll have a very sturdy uh, A-frame for our Roycraft uh, pack. Okay, so here is our uh, A-frame uh, Roycraft pack uh, structure here. All right, I've modified it with adding another crossbar to give it more support, uh, give it a little bit more load bearing weight, uh, make it more secure. This top bar at the top of the apex there is not necessary. This is optional. All right, this part is optional. The basic A frame is the traditional Roycroft frame pack. Okay, uh, you don't have to go that extra step if you don't want it. So. Now we're going. I'm going to show you how to um, load this on with uh, a pack using a wool blanket, and uh, how I tie, how I tie it on. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. Different sorts of um, configurations with ropes and whatnot that you can lash things together. I'm just going to do it um, real simply with a diamond hitch, uh, and and both the diamond the diamond pack hitch as well as the um, transom knots being links below they're on my channel uh, 
and look for them if you're interested in knowing how to do that. And then we're gonna do the straps differently. So we're gonna add the straps lastly. So right now I'm gonna show you how to pack this up. 